Well, the day was absolutely relentless right from the very start. Sean, average pace of 45 kilometers per hour for the, uh, sorry, 50 kilometers now for the first 45 minutes. And it didn't really let up in terms of drama from that moment on. No, it was uh, a real hectic start. And, you know, the, uh, the average speed in the first hour tells the story. And, you know, the riders that were moving up the road, groups of riders, uh, individual riders going in the attack, it was non-stop, full-on racing. And uh, it was 75 kilometres approximately before the, uh, the first part of the breakaway managed to get away. And that was nine riders. And then there was, I think, a call from a lot of the directors. OK, guys, we've missed the break. You have to try and get across. And that pushed another five riders out of the uh, peloton. And that wasn't enough. There was other riders uh, got the orders. You have to try and make it. And another four metres across. And that made the huge breakaway. And then it settled down after that. But, you know, we can see... The, uh, the effects of that really fast start, you know, real difficult race, and we could see there was a lot of riders in the breakaway who were suffering, you know, on the first, on the first time up that uh, climb, which we had to do on uh, two occasions here this evening. Well, Lancelotti was assembling mountains points. It looked like there was uh, an accord back here. Jomo Visma prepared to make sure that the gap didn't really get silly, but it was it was bouncing around between four and six minutes throughout the entire day. Lancelotti was building up his King of the Mountains points, and they were busy attacking each other uh, further back down the mountain behind in his wake. Well, Lawson Krulik also wanted uh, to be part of proceedings and our thoughts, and the American time trialist certainly was up there towards the end. We had 18 riders in total, a big super group, you might say. And when we took on our climb of the day, and in fact, the day, the climb that defines Bilbao, really, the Vivero, the big swooping roads into town that don't really flatten out until the last two kilometers. And really, the road doesn't straighten out until the last 500 meters. So how would it pan out when we came round to take on our climb as part of a 29-kilometer circuit for the last time? Jake Stewart pushed on. He looked very, very strong. Rudy Millar uh, then uh, was allowed to sit in on the wheel of Fred Wright, the man he was battling for the red jersey for. And then Mark Soler decided, having bridged over to the breakaway on the orders of his team, he went for it. He sat in only just to catch his breath. And then, of course, he attacked on the final time of asking on the climb. He built up a gap. It was hovering around 15 seconds. Jake Stewart got himself cramp, and it left a select group of chasers that actually reformed late on with some of the quick men who'd struggled on the climb, also getting back in. But the gap down to six seconds, would it be enough for Soler? That was the big question. Sean, he had the answer. He had the answer, and uh, he you know, uh, really kept it going very strong all the way. I was concerned there uh, was about 2.5 kilometers to go that he was going to get swallowed up. And then very late here, we could see you know, the group was coming back, but just held, held off well and uh, yeah, put in a real strong ride. And yeah, we can see there in the rear, there was a lot of strong riders you know, together, but never really got told.